Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day. Today I wanted to share with you my craft desk essentials for 2018. I know I did a video last year, so a lot of things are the same, but I have some new ones I'd like to share with you. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, I've had a lot of questions and I thought this would be a great way to answer a few of those questions. Now, starting off, I have a new way that I'm storing my embossing powders, and I'm loving this, and I think you will like it too. I picked up this little cosmetic container over on Amazon, and it's a three pocket or three drawer acrylic container. I have my white embossing powder here, my clear, and then my silver. I only bought one because I wasn't sure if I'd like it or not, but so far, I'm loving it. I think it's working out perfect. If you use those little star, uh, Tupperware or plastic containers to store your embossing powders, you're gonna love this. The size of it's perfect. Um, I attached my little wooden spoons to the side of it using some foam squares, <laughs> only because I don't like putting them on the inside of my my embossing powder. Um, it's just easier to grab from the side than it is to dig it out and dust it off. <laughs> um, but it's the perfect size and it's pretty. <laughs> I like pretty things. This is the box that it came in. It was, um, I believe, a little over $10. So it was a good price point for me. And I like um, the fact that you can stack one on top of the other. So this is a nice little investment and I thought I would share it with you guys. If you're looking for a way to install your bossy patterns, this works great. Okay, next I wanted to share with you my Mini Misty. A lot of people ask how come I have washi tape along the edges of it. Well, um, this is a well-loved Mini Misty. I have a few cracks in it you can see here on my front and on the side. But I clean it so often and I use a magic eraser to clean it and I actually erased off some of my pink tape. Underneath here you can see the white area and it kind of looked really sloppy <laughs> and I, it drove me crazy. And so I know that um, the My Sweet Petunia Shop um, and some other stores sell the tape for the larger Mini Misties that you can replace it with, but I could not find it for the Mini Misty, only the, the original size. And so washi tape worked out great for me. Um, I know you can take the original Mini Misty tape and trim it down, but I wanted something that looked exactly like the tape that was on there originally, and since I couldn't find it, I'm going to cover it up with something pretty. <laughs> so. This is my my solution to that. That's why I washi tape. Now I laminate the grid paper that originally came with the Mini Misty. And believe it or not, this is the same one that I laminated from a year ago. Um, it wipes away beautifully. And so I really encourage you if you have a Mini Misty and you use the grid papers to laminate it because it will save you a lot of money and it will be easy cleanup. <laughs> Now, the hardest ink for me to clean up is my VersaFine ink and also my um, VersaMark ink. I'm going to stamp this image here, and I did make a mess on the lid just to show you what it does. Now, to clean it off, I use a stamp chamois, and I'll tell you a little bit about what I use in a little bit. But it wipes off nice. I usually used to use baby wipes, but I found that sometimes the baby wipes that I chose have lint that will transfer to my my images and so when I stamp there's little hairs so it, I'd have to have to re-stamp so the stamp chamois is working fantastic for that but to clean off my misty I use a magic eraser like I said I just cut it into three parts this one is not the original brand it's a generic brand that I get at the dollar store <laughs> but um works great I've had never had any problems um, I just wipe it off and it kind of does the work for me, especially with the, the tough black inks and the Versamark ink. It just um, scrubs it right away. And if you have um, sticky tape on your plastic, that eraser takes it off too. So uh, magic erasers are nice to have on, on hand. <laughs> now to clean my stamps, I use my Ranger water-based stamp cleaner. It smells so good, smells like bubble gum. <laughs> Um, I basically only use this for stamps when I use it for sentiments and images that I use with my VersaFine Onyx Black ink because it is um, a tougher ink. It's a pigment based ink and it's a little bit tougher to get off. 
So that's what I used to clean off that. You do have to use a little bit of elbow grease and your stamp chamois, but works beautifully. And it, it comes out pretty clean, which I like. So those two are for my Versafine and Versamark inks. Okay, now for Memento, I just use my stamp chamois and it wipes off my images beautifully. And also my Misty beautifully. So that's, um, that's my Misty. Okay, now the stamp chamois here. Now I did purchase the Lawn Fawn stamp chamois. It's high, it's great quality and I loved it so much, but it's a little bit on the pricey side, at least for me. Um, this is a well-loved one. You can see that your image ink transfers to the chamois and it makes it look not so pretty. Um, I've washed it a few times and it washes beautifully along with these ones. Now these are my alternative. I picked these up on Amazon and I, they come in four in a pack. I believe they're blue and yellow. Now these sheets are pretty large so I quarter them and then I just round the corners off and then when this one is too bad to wash and too bad to use I'll just toss it and grab another one. That way for that pack I can get 16 chamois for the same price that I would pay for one of the Lawn Fawn. So that's a little tidbit and I'll leave links below. Um, I'm not sure if the price is the same because I've had these for a while but I will leave links to that product. Now for my foam tape, I love my 3M foam tape, but it gets on the pricey side. Um, right now, in September, today, they have this on Amazon for a little over $22. And that's a great price for me for the 3M foam tape. If it goes over $25, I won't buy it at all because I think it's too expensive. Um, I love the 3M foam tape, and this is the 3 quarter inch, which makes it even better. So, um... If you're looking to buy a big mama roll of the 3M, now's the time to buy the three-quarter inch. Um, now, if you're watching this six months from now, the price may have changed, so just to let you know. <laughs> now, I've had a lot of questions about my little jewel picker upper here. I love this thing. Well, I love pretty things, and so the little gems in the barrel, it's just so, so pretty. Love fanciness, love fancy coffees, and fancy pretty things. <laughs> I want to show you how it picks up sequins. It picks them up beautifully. Now I've had this for a while and I've had a lot of questions about it. This was under $10 and I picked it up on Amazon also. Um, again, the price might be changing, so just let you know right now it's, it's under $10. But it picks up sequins beautifully. That little wax tip is actually real wax which is nice. It hasn't dried out on me. I haven't had no pri problems with it dry, uh, drying out. So it picks up my sequins beautifully. Now, I used to use um, this, these two, well, this jewel picker-upper. And I found like every month and a half I'd have to replace it because the tips of these, it's a metal tip, but the tops of them are covered with like a plastic. And, I, and the plastic kept almost dissolving or melting away. And I kept thinking, well, why is it doing that? But I think it was because of my glues. Um, you can see here, the I just peeled off the rest of that green plastic on the bottom. But it doesn't, um, after a while, it, they don't pick up the sequins anymore. And I think it's because of my glue. Um, I was on my way to actually purchase another one. And I thought, well, three is just too many. These shouldn't be disposable. <laughs> so that's when I found the fancy jewel picker upper. And so I would recommend the Fancy Jewel Picker Upper over these any day because of uh, if you use glues. Um, because I, I did have to replace several of them. So I just wanted to let you know that. <laughs> I actually keeping that one as a um, scoring tool. <laughs> so this one is beautiful and it works great. If you're looking for a jewel picker upper, I would recommend this one. Okay, since I have my sequin, oh, I wanted to show you the wax tip. Um, if it does lose its tackiness, you just peel up a little bit of the wax. I just lift it up and then twist it around the barrel of it, and then it's tacky again. So it works out great. Okay, since I have my sequins out, I want to show you about my sequin storage. I mentioned this before in a previous video, but this container I picked up in the jewelry department at Walmart. It, there comes 24 of these little containers inside one big case and they're perfect for sequin storage. Um, most of the time I'll label the sequins underneath just because it's easier for me to remember for you guys. 
they store beautifully. They're not that thick. And I, I believe right now I have four of them. So they stack nice and neatly right on top of each other. Now in the same Walmart department, right next to each other, I believe, is this container. This is how I store my mini ink cubes and my mini distress ink cubes. They're little, they're sectioned off except for that middle section. But they come right out and they hold my little mini ink cubes beautifully. And I like the fact that you can see through the sequin storage and the ink cubes. I like to be able to look and then grab. It just makes it easier for me. So that's how I store those. Okay, for my blending tool storage, this is new to me. I used to store my blending tools in a little bowl. Um, I found that this was working fantastic. I punch out a little circle with white cardstock. I'll glue it down to the top with the color of the ink and I'll go over it with the glossy accents to, to designate each one of my blending tools. That way um, I have a color for each of my pads. But this little container I picked up on Amazon. I believe it's a nail polish container and it holds them beautifully. Since I did pick up some more of the, the new release of the Distress Oxide ink, I'm going to get another one of those. Okay, also on my desk I have this little container. Now I store my heat tool and I did a still shot here because on the inside of my, my container my heat gun actually melted the bottom of it. But I'm, I'm not too worried about it. It was fairly inexpensive. In fact, I think I got this at the dollar store. But I hold my craft picks, my glues, and my erasers in here. And that's off to the side. So it's nice and handy. Now to the uh, left of me I have this little rolly caddy. I love these little things that are sectioned off because it just helps me stay organized. I keep my scissors in here. These are actually Martha Stewart's fine detail scissors and you can't buy them no more. That's why I try not to show them because they are um, discontinued but they're my favorite. <laughs> I also store my purple tape and also my masking tape in one of the little containers. A long time ago Martha Stewart I think I was my teen teenager a long time ago I remember her saying one time the key to organization is accessibility. So you have to be able to grab it and put it away and you will be organized. And that is what I stick to and I think that is wonderful advice. So that's how I kind of do my craft, well everything in my home <laughs> is, is the key is accessibility I suppose. Okay, now this is another caddy that I have to the right of me. This is where I store my, my longer tools. I have my Wicca Stella and my shimmer pens. I keep my blending tools and my paint brushes. This is sectioned off into four sections. It's actually a metal container and I believe both of these little rolly caddies. Well, I'm going to show you one more in a little bit. But all of them I've got it Tuesday morning. Um, uh, I'm, I'm kind of a frugal shopper. I'm, I'm very picky on... on things that I buy be only because I work so hard for my money and so I am very careful about my spending and so if I can find a good deal I'll pick it up and so this was a real good deal but I have my little magnetic container here that just sticks right on the side my little tweezers and so that's everything that's there okay now for my die storage okay I used to store them in Avery L pockets, but I kept tearing them and ripping them and I wouldn't put them away. So I this is my solution. I just pick up this little plastic container at, at Walmart, I believe they're 99 cents. But I store my most used dies um, on magnetic sheets and then I can just file through them, grab it, and then I can just put them back in that little plastic container. I have two of these actually on a three tier metal craft cart that I can pull out and put next to me while I'm creating my cards. So that's handy dandy. Okay, I want to show you how I create my little magnetic sheets for my dies that I use the most. I buy these magnetic sheets on Amazon. There's 25 in a pack and they're 8 by 10 inches. There's adhesive backing so you just can remove the release paper. And then I'll go ahead and buy the cheap cardstock from Walmart and then I'll fold it in half. Once it's in half I'll take some double-sided strong tape and add it to the middle and then I'll cut my magnet in half and place that on that cardstock. And it's sturdy enough to stay straight up in that little plastic container and hold. And then the magnets work great 
So I always put the label on the back because I um I know I forget who does, who is manufacturer for some of my dyes and stuff. So labeling now is very important. But that's that. Okay, now for my Nuvo Drops. I think when something is pretty and colorful, it should be shown. So on my craft desk, I have this little rolly caddy. I keep my Nuvo Drops in the bottom here. And then I also have extra Nuvo embossing powders I keep on top along with my Nuvo Shimmer powders. I love the little diamond on the very top of my little rolly caddy. And since the Nuvo products have diamonds on top, I thought this would be really pretty. And it's a nice accent, a nice splash of color on my craft desk. So that's how I store that. Now on that three tier craft caddy next to my desk here, I also store in a little basket my most used inks. And I just keep five or six of them in here. And these are the ones I use the most for my tutorials. Just keep them in a little black basket. And then I also have the same size basket where I keep my acrylic blocks. A whole bunch of different sizes. I just pull the one out that I need and it's right next to me and nice and handy. I have another basket the same size that has my larger acrylic blocks that I don't use as often. And then also on that cart I use my have my distress sprayers. But okay. Right in front of me on my glass craft mat here I have this container. I picked this up at a dollar store I believe. And I have some Nina 80 pound in there, some scratch paper, some a few card bases and then an extra pack of my Nina 80 pound that I picked up at scrapbook.com <laughs> but I keep score tape in my foam adhesive squares my um, dimensional adhesive just nice and handy and then I also keep my tape runner in here now this is new to me I haven't been using this very long but oh my goodness it lasts forever I make a lot of cards but and I've, I've must have tried every tape runner out there you can imagine and this one has worked the best for me so far you just you can remove the cartridges you keep the base and just add the refill but it's the Kokyo, Kokyo a tape runner and there's a lot in there and it hasn't jammed up on me once so I'm looking at that and I'm not a real big fan of the ATG guns because of the size I'm, I like the smaller size of my tape runner Okay, cardstock. Of course, I'm gonna. I love my Google Digital. I know this was very inexpensive expensive last year, and it seems like when I recommended it, the price went skyrocketed. But every once in a while, I check Amazon for the prices of this, and then when I feel it's at a reasonable price, I'll pick a couple packs up. But this is great stuff because of the weight of it. It's heavy duty cardstock. It's a 110 pound cover weight. And it's bright white, and I love white card bases. So this is the cardstock I use. I just take it to the Office Depot and have them cut it down the middle for me. And they store it in these little boxes here. Um, and then every time I want to score my card bases, I just grab some from there. I do the same thing with my Nina Classic Crest 80 pound. I don't use this for card bases because it's lighter weight, but I use it for stamping. But those are my cardstocks. Watercolor cardstocks, I buy the 9 by 12 um, paper pads. I use the for the Canson watercolor cardstock and also for the Bristol Smooth. I just, when I, I have a little container that I cut them in quarters in and have them next to my desk for when they're ready to be used. So that's my craft desk essentials today. I hope I didn't talk your ear off. I feel like I have. But I hope I answered all your questions. Um, if you have any more for me, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to answer them. But these are items that work best for me and, and my craft desk. And if you have any recommendations, I'll bring them on because I love recommendations. But I hope you have a fantastic day, guys. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope your weekend's going well. And we will see you again real soon. Bye-bye.